Well, hello and welcome to another Teleaquarium with the Alaska Sea Life Center. Uh, as always, I'm Alex and I'm joined by Haley. Uh, we're here for another Sunday fish sketch. Um, today's pretty fun. It's going to be a fun one. We'll see how it goes. Some interesting fish for this one. It's, they're, they're always interesting fish, I guess, on all the Sunday fish sketch. Um, but really quick, if, you, if you're tuning in, you're like, what is Sunday fish sketch? Um, you have been missing out. So every Sunday uh, on Twitter, there is uh, the Sunday Fish Sketch. It's its own hashtag, just hashtag Sunday Fish Sketch. Uh, and basically, folks from around Twitter um, draw fish. That's all they do. And uh, Rebain, uh, Renee Martin is the, the person who runs this. Uh, and every week, usually on Friday, they give a theme uh, of what type of fish we're going to be doing for that Sunday. You don't have to follow the theme, but it's kind of fun to try and uh, match that, that theme. Uh, so this week's theme, we're going to be trying to match. Um, Renee says, although school is only out for summer, this year it feels like school is out forever. Let's celebrate 2020 graduates. Among the many other things should be celebrated uh, for this week's Sunday fish sketch. So we are going to draw some schooling fishes. Um, and we have selected a few schooling fish that can be found here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. So Haley, what are your thoughts on uh, this week's theme, I guess? Yeah, I think it's a pretty fun theme, especially with school wrapping up for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, I'm probably going to do, I think I'm going to do a herring, which is one of the fish we have here. We have live herring, but then we also feed herring to our animals as well. So it's a very important fish for the center. Um, and they really like to school. So this is kind of like a, a school of herring going on behind me. So they can form like massive groups, which are pretty impressive. Yeah, the, the bait balls that they form uh, just get huge. Uh, I've never yeah. had the opportunity to swim in a bait ball, um, you know, like uh, to actually uh, scuba dive around a bait ball or anything, but definitely uh, sort of a goal. You have? It was cool. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like a smaller one. Um, I used to work on an island and they would like come into this cove we had and they would all school kind of right off the dock. So sometimes we could get in the water and see them. But I don't I don't think they were herring. I think they were probably anchovies or sardines. Cool. I am pretty jealous. Really, I want to, I think I say this, I think I've said this before. Fish are fun. I really want like a, a Sunday invert sketch, Sunday squid yeah. sketch <laughs> at some point because I love squid, uh, but squid will do a big bait ball as well, like uh, market squid and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to dive uh, in a shoal of squid. All right, we are gonna get started. So you are doing herring. I am going to be doing um, salmon, which we've done before. We did salmon a ways back. We've actually done it a couple times, I guess, through different themes. Um, but today, kind of looking at uh, the juvenile salmon, the little, the little fry salmon, when they form their little, they get their little par bars down the side, which are those dark bands on their side that can uh, work as camouflage. Um, so I do have some videos here that I'll put up. Um, we have those little teeny tiny baby salmon, which of course grow up and become uh, not so baby salmon uh, at some point where they actually um, become uh, adult salmon out in the ocean and then you know spawning salmon as they come in. So I'll probably show that back up at some point as we're drawing, uh, but we're also going to show really quick uh, some herring. So the herring are another schooling fish. Uh, here's some footage, just literally just from dropping a camera in, in Resurrection Bay, uh, which is our bay here at the Sea Life Center, uh, or the bay that we're up against. Um, but these herring, we actually do have herring in the building as well. Uh, there's a little video on our YouTube, that's what this is from, uh, all about taking care of herring here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, uh, where of course you gotta feed them and they go all crazy because uh, they're schooling fish and they just go nuts when they're getting fed. So. Always fun. All right, I think we will start. Awesome. So I'll kick over to my uh, view here, but we've also got uh, Haley's view. We'll kick back and forth. Yeah. All right, so I gotta think about the little, the little teeny tiny salmon. I would kind of described that uh, the, the salmon are like stretched out goldfish crackers. Um, <laughs> yeah. In, they're like, uh, they're round. They're very round. They're cute. They're not angular and sleek yet. They're just like these little cute fish. Not that, you know, big salmon aren't also uh, 
or don't also have the potential to be cute. But I think also so. cute, just different. It's just different. Just different. Yeah, it's amazing how much salmon change throughout their life cycle. They really look different as juveniles. And I thought it was interesting. I was doing a little bit, a little bit of research earlier on the difference between schooling and shoals, so like shoaling. Um, and it's mainly just like if fish are in a school, it's probably all one kind of fish and they're all sticking together and swimming in the same direction at the same time. So they're really uniform where if they're in a shoal, they're probably just loosely hanging out together. So that's, that's kind of the difference. See, I, didn't, I did not know that difference. So that's cool. Yeah. There is, there's kind of a, a semantic difference between uh, your shoal and your school. Yeah, a lot of people use them interchangeably, but like herring and salmon definitely school because they go in the same direction at the same time um, and they're very uniform. But other fish, a lot of tropical fish will just kind of hang out together, um, but they'll all swim in different directions. And put my salmon back up here real quick. Just thinking. Yeah. They, I don't know. They've just got these little little face. They don't have crazy mouths. We were talking a little beforehand because yeah. you're doing the the herring. Um, that herring kind of have uh, sort of a weird little mouth on them. You do. I'm trying to draw that mouth right now, and it's it's going okay, but maybe not the best. <laughs> And they do. Their mouth is like, it kind of looks like they're frowning. Yeah, they, they kind of have these weird little, they're not, they're, it's not like a tube mouth. Like we do have a uh, little, little, um, you know, uh, fish here with, with tubey snouts, uh, including the, you know, tube snout. Um, but uh, yeah, the herring kind of have a strange, a strange pucker going on. Yeah, they do. They're kind of rounded, which I'm trying to get right right now. So, Alex, do you want? Talk about why fish school? Yeah, we could certainly go into why why they're schooling, you know. Um, people, you know, there's lots of yeah. jokes about like, oh, fish going to school. But um, it's very important for them uh, to be able to school. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's something, I think it catches a lot of people's um, attention as well, which is kind of interesting um, since, I mean, one purpose of a school is to not catch something's attention at least individually. Right. It's um, just a blend in and kind of look like a, a big mass that maybe a predator couldn't try to find a weak spot in. Yes. Yeah. You got to look like something big, um, big and scary and not like a teeny tiny little tasty morsel of a fish um, that right. could more easily be eaten. My fish, my, my picture as every week is just coming apart at the seams here. Oh, no. <laughs> My fish, I, I, yeah, I went way overboard with how round he is, and uh, that's just that's just the way it is. That's just how that's okay. he's gonna be. And that's okay. He's just gonna be a little extra chubby salmon fry, and that's okay. That's okay. He's getting extra extra uh, bugs, um, yeah. but yeah, the schools, um, you know, the the schooling behavior, uh, it is very important to stay alive, or it's a be important behavior that helps these fish stay alive, um, because it. Uh, it makes you not just an individual, right? If I'm like a shark or a sea lion uh, or even, you know, it's just a whale and I'm cruising around and there's just a herring in the middle of nowhere, uh, I'm not going to have any problem at all just grabbing that herring and eating that herring. Right. Um, but as a uh, school, there's suddenly many more fish. You know, the chances of you being the fish that it gets is slim, um, and that's implying that there's still fish that get eaten, and they might, you know, you're not totally safe in a school, um, but it makes it more difficult for them to pick you out, and it makes it more difficult for them to just pick anything out, you know, because a school moves 
uh, sort of in a unified way, as if it's its own organism. Um, and the fish use the, the sensory organs, um, their touch sensory organs, like the lateral line, to feel mm -hmm. where all the other fish are in that school, and they can maintain their distance, they can maintain their spacing, they can all turn together, which is sort of gives that um, hypnotic uh, visual of a school all moving together like a big bait ball. Right. I think that's one of the things that's most interesting if you're watching a school or like a bait ball is that they do move all in like perfect sync with each other. And it's kind of like they're all like telepathic, but yeah, they're just really sensing the water movement around them with that lateral line. And there is actually, um, it's actually something that's been modeled uh, in computer modeling. Um, Ooh, it, this, this idea of flocking like a bird, um, but also it, it can be used for, for modeling like the schooling behavior. It's called a um, voids, B-O-I-D-S, um, <laughs> which is, 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 always makes me think of the, like that, that meme video of the, the kid who likes uh, uh, turtles and he says it like toitles. Um, oh, so yeah. it's like if you were a person who likes birds, but you sit at Boyd's, um, that's just what that <laughs> makes me think of. But that, you know, you should check that out if you're interested. There's actually a lot of screensavers that have been made from it because um, it's a pretty oh. lightweight um, simulation. But basically what you're doing is you have a bunch of little things. Those are your Boyd's. And you program them to always maintain a certain distance. Like you can't get too close to your neighbor, but you also need to be um, within a certain distance of your neighbor, and then everyone's also trying to achieve a goal of, you know, like getting to point A or from point A to point B or something like that. And it, it just creates this nice flowing behavior. Um, so okay. it, it's something that, you know, mathematicians have looked into and, and uh, computer um, whizzes have looked into, like, how do, you, how do schools work? And, and is there a, um, sort of a, a math behind it? It's just interesting stuff. But, yeah, schools... Uh, serve very uh, important purpose for the fish that are in them and for humans that go to school as well, I suppose I'll say. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think schools of fish always remind me kind of, of like herds of animals on land too. Um, like zebras, they kind of hang out in a school, but it's on land and they travel together and then they kind of have stripes similar to like your salmon that have stripes that make them all look like they're one giant animal rather than tiny individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's true. My, my little my fish here is definitely going to have some, uh, some little par, um, par lines, which help them uh, blend in a little bit. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with the fin on my... He's just, he's just a weird, a weird little fry here. <laughs> well, I made my herring way too round too. So I think we're on a similar train of thought today. Excellent. I really <laughs> dig your round herring though. That's great. He's right so round. And then his top fit is so tiny, but they, it, it's kind of tiny. Probably not that small. <laughs> oh, well. Our fish are just very well off. And I think, I think this is kind of the thing, right? It's like, I hope people uh, want to draw along um, with Sunday Fish Sketch. And maybe you're like, well, I just don't, I don't draw that well. That's okay if you don't draw, you know, as well <laughs> as you'd like to. I certainly don't. Um, <laughs> but it's just fun to, uh, to draw fish. It's just, it's just kind of something to uh, lose some time to. And I think we've, we've talked about it before. You learn a little bit about your fish usually when you when you kind of draw it. You know, if you if you if you follow the theme and the theme is something that you're not that familiar with, um, then in finding a fish for that theme and researching a fish for that Sunday fish sketches theme, you might learn a little something about uh, that particular fish, which is kind of fun. Yeah, or like in this case for this week, I learned something about like fish behavior. Yeah, I moved these fins up, and now I want them back down where they were. So. <laughs> this this one I think this is the messiest one yet. Oh no. This is this is not one of my better ones either. Alex, we're supposed to be learning. I mean, I'm <laughs> learning about about fish. <laughs> I'm not necessarily learning about how to draw them better. Uh
trying to put some scales on my little herring here without spending hours on it. <laughs> we could we could be here all day. Yeah, it's it's fun when we do have schooling fish here at the center, though. Yeah, they're super interesting to watch. Just to see them uh, doing the schooling behavior. We, uh, you know, we have the little harbor bottom tank that's got the um, herring in it right now, which are fun to watch school. We also had um, some pollock, some juvenile pollock in there at one point, and they were schooling. Um, but they didn't school as much as the herring do now, except one morning I was here, like right as, you know, the building lights were starting to come on. Um, and right as the lights came on, I could see that they were all schooled together, right? But then once they were able to see, they, they spread out. Um, so it, it's almost like maybe they were like, oh, you know, it's dark. There could be predators out there. And they pulled together into that school um, maybe to protect themselves. I don't know. That's interesting. So with this being a schooling theme um, mm -hmm. for the, the, the fish, I was thinking I'll probably add some more little fish in the background. But I realized, like, we're doing schooling fish and then we're drawing like one fish. Yeah, I was actually just starting to do that. <laughs> My schooling fish are going to be like, not that detailed, but that's okay. I keep mentioning the, uh, the par lines. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what I'm drawing now, these little par bars. Um, for anyone that could see that, I'll, I'll kick my screen over so it's a little bigger. Um, you can see that these sort of just darker bars um, that run on the, the sides of the fish. Uh, you know, and those yeah. seem to serve like a, a camouflage purpose. Um, yeah, these are really round fish. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Super round little fish. Yeah, and here you have um, counter shading as well, which kind of helps them with camouflaging. Yeah, the counter shading's nice. And um, I was going to draw like the, the lateral line on here too, I guess. Because they do have a little, mm -hmm. little lateral line, uh, which like we mentioned, that's the um, sensory organ. You can see it on many fish. It runs down the side of their body, and it's a way for them to feel um, movement in the water around them. They can actually feel... Um, all the, the ripples and the vibrations being made by everything. And you might imagine, you know, if I was swimming in the ocean, um, splashing along, my splashes are going to feel a lot different to the things in the water than like the splashes of uh, like a sea lion or even just like a big boat moving around or something like that. Um, so they, they can tell sort of the general size and location, direction, I suppose, of things that are moving around in the water. Gosh, I a really round fish here. <laughs> I like him. I've seen some cool footage of um, schools of fish trying to avoid sharks or sea lions, and they it's really cool because the shark or sea lion can almost make like a pattern in the school of fish as they like move out of the way. Yes, yeah, like um, from from like an aerial aerial view. And there's yeah, actually some exactly. really great shots of um, humpback whales. So up here in Alaska, um, mm -hmm. the humpback whales uh, do like to partake in the herring. Um, and uh, there's some great shots of like whales moving through schools of fish as well, where all the, the school gets out of the way. So up here, the, um, the humpback whales, when they do eat the herring, um, a lot of people like to see them uh, bubble net, which I think we had described um, in the previous stream, but the bubble netting is where they yeah. uh, they kind of blow bubbles as they travel in a circle around the school of fish, and these fish sort of go ah, I don't you know there's these bubbles, and they swim away from the bubbles. But since the whale goes in a big circle, it collects the fish in the middle. They all get into that big bait ball into the middle of the bubbles, uh, and then the whales can come up through the middle of that ring of bubbles and really just scoop all the fish because um, there's yeah. just nowhere for the fish to get out of the way. Super cool feeding behavior. Oh, see, I like your little school uh, of fish going on. It's here. an abstract school. I didn't really want to draw a 
ton of herring. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that's what it is. I have like one fish and I don't, I don't feel like drawing a million of these little guys right now. Um, I, I did, I did a school um, back for a theme uh, a couple weeks back that was like um, an art you had to do. Um, yeah, your school for that was great. You had to do, I actually have that picture here. You had to do um, like an old painting or an old piece of art as if it were a fish or replacing it with fish. Alex does school of Pollock oh, for that. Got one. it here somewhere. Aha! All right, here it is. That's that's the that's the old me. Just doing <laughs> doing a school of fish like uh, Starry Night. So you see, like, if this is your first Sunday fish sketch that you're tuning into with us. Um, there's all sorts of weird little themes. And like I said, you don't even have to follow the theme. Um, there's people every week that do off-topic Sunday fish sketch. They just draw a new fish for that week. It's fun. Yeah. It's definitely a really fun challenge, and you can draw really whatever kind of fish you want. We hope you will join us, though, uh, in drawing fish. And if you do, if you do draw some fish, um, you know, maybe you're drawing the same fish we're drawing, or maybe you're drawing your own fish, uh, you can share that with the hashtag. You can actually see it right there. Um, Teleaquarium, and that's uh, our hashtag. That'll let us know that you, you know, we're, we're drawing along with us or inspired by us. But also, obviously, you want to do it with Sunday Fish Sketch um, so that everyone can see it. Uh, and you should just check that hashtag out. Even if you don't draw any fish this week, you should check out that hashtag and see what other people have. It's fun to just see. Yeah, it's fun to go on there and see how people interpreted the theme, what they did. didn't work out. I was trying to like blur my fish in the background. I really just smudged them instead, so. Oh no. Yeah, that's all right. Not a problem. Just clean that up a bit and get some new ones in there. Yeah. The nice thing about making my main fish this round is that drawing the little ones in the background is really easy now as well. Because <laughs> I just draw these little, these little circles um, and then uh, like a little little blobby tail on them and a big eye, and we're good to go. Yep. Is there a theme you would like to see, I guess? Is there, is there some, something? Like, I'm always like, I want an invert week that's not even fish. Just give me, like, a squid or something. I mean that's that's defeating the purpose. But is there is there a fish you would like to to draw or a theme you would like to draw? Ooh, that's a hard one. I feel like we've drawn a lot of my favorite fish at the Alaska Sea Life Center, and I mean the other week the theme was us, so we got to pick whatever our favorite fish was. But I don't know. Be fun to get to draw some like really colorful fish and we could like challenge ourselves to color them. It's like a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, something like a like a kelp greenling. They've got some oh, really yeah, cool coloration on them. All right, I think I'm probably good. Like, I'll slap some more fish on here. I'm never going to achieve the, the size of school that you've got going on there, though. Oh, that's just because all mine are circles, except for, like, two tiny, tiny ones I drew, which yeah, is awful. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, I probably should have just done circles. I like that as an, as an approach um, to just yeah. a little school in the background. But, no, I've got these goofy little things. 
what it really does, like yours kind of works because they, they're just like there in the background. There's this big thing that crosses across. Mine just looks like there's a massive fish with teeny tiny little fish around it. Aww. Maybe that speaks as to why he's so round, this particular uh, little salmon fry. He's just, <laughs> Maybe he's just really he's just big. big. He's like Clifford all. the Big Red Dog, but in a little tiny salmon fry form. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> all right. So to wrap up here, that's uh, your fish. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, my fish. Oh, yeah, they look great. He's doing OK. This, like, I don't know what's up with his little back fin here. I got to, like, actually close that off. <laughs> um, all right. And then uh, I think that will uh, be it. But uh, we hope that you have enjoyed uh, another Sunday fish sketch with us and uh, another Telequarium program. Um, we are not doing teleaquariums every day anymore. We have just recently opened the Sea Life Center back up to the public, so we're kind of trying to find our footing on that. Um, but we will be doing teleaquarium programs on our YouTube channel, uh, so be sure you, uh, you subscribe to us, give this video a big old thumbs up, let us know you're appreciating it, um, and we can see about doing this uh, a lot more and other programs as well. Um, but go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and you'll kind of know when new videos are going up or new live streams are happening. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, the Alaska Sea Life Center's Facebook page. Uh, it does some live streams here and there. Um, and then, of course, we have a, a Twitter account as well, where we will be posting up our drawings uh, on there. And, uh, oh gosh, there's a big old, big old walleye pollock cruising behind <laughs> me in that view. That's actually a uh, stream from our seabird diving habitat um, that's uh, up on the screen behind me. Uh, and that is available on our YouTube as well, just a live stream of our seabird habitat. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed joining us. And Haley, uh, it was fun, as always, drawing more Sunday fish. Yeah. Perfect. So we will uh, see you all next time, oh, it's a good time. Uh, for another Teleaquarium. <laughs>